They even took the bottle with them. Five miles north of Saigon. Lock Nin has been bombed several times in the past two years. Man, you sure blew it. Hey, I said I was sorry. What is your problem, boy? It would have been some night, you know. I was ready to go with you. Uh, you snooze, you lose. You were too slow. Oh, Jason, if they left us like that, then they couldn't have wanted us. You don't understand, Matt. They were looking for action. Men of action. Decisiveness. Well, if I'm not their idea of a man of action, I'm sorry. I have my own standards. That's what I want to know. Quit complaining, Lindsay. I can't stand it anymore. God damn it, Wedge! That's the last time you stick me with a check. I paid for the cab. Oh, big deal. Now, who told you to drink scotch? Snowflake ordered scotch. Oh, well, old Snowflake's got herself a wooden leg. Look, the next time we go out drinking, you make sure you get yourself a little playmate that don't drink so much. Will you two faggots go somewhere else and play? Look who's talking. I don't see you getting much action. Yeah, Cole. When was the last time you made out? Tonight. While you two were out pouring drinks down some B-girls and striking out. Yeah, it looks like he made out. In left field. Oh! Two stateside chicks apartment. Champagne. The works swingers. We had an orgy. I'd say the only orgy you guys had was with yourselves. You want a fat lip, man? You want to give it to me, man? Huh? Come on. Matt, let's go with their butts. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I got you. I got you. Oh, I got you. Father? Leonard. What is it? Please, sit. What happened? It was so strange. Stupid. Grown men fighting over whether or not they'd been to bed with women they don't even care about. Men behave strangely, especially in war. Well, I think it's disgusting. They're always grabbing each other. Oh? You think they are homosexuals? I don't know. But they... They say that the guys that brag the most really have a problem. And if they were, how would you feel? I would feel that they have no place in the Air Force. That I'd have to report them, kick them out. Would you really? Yes, I would. But we are all God's creatures, each with his own frailties. Well, things that disgust me, I can't accept. Well, I had to tell somebody how I feel, how ashamed I am of my behavior. You have said nothing that I can see to feel shame. Are you withholding something? That's all. All right, my son. When you are ready, you will tell me. Jason, hmm? you sleep? I'm trying to. Hey, thanks for helping me with those freaks. Where'd you go? Get some air, do some thinking. What are you, crazy? You're bucking for sniper bait? Listen, Jason. I've already had it with this place. I'm gonna ask for a transfer stateside. To where? Air commando training. What's the matter? Isn't I rough enough in the boonies for you? I need a change, something to challenge me. 
I put in for it now, I'll be able to get it by the end of this tour when I rotate. Yeah? That might not be such a bad idea. You get promotion faster in an outfit like that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Maybe we could get it together. Yeah. Right. Okay. You're always spoken. No, I'm not. You satisfied? Would you just relax? Just relax. Here, here. Halt! Who is it? Airman First Matlovich. Come on in. What are you doing walking around out there? I got something I rigged up for you guys. You're gonna get your head blown off. Reaver's been firing at the frogs. Well, the Kong carved up two of our men 50 feet from the PX last night. Well, maybe this will help. Don't <laughs> let Matt, you are a freaking genius. Everybody's gonna want this post. <laughs> I'm gonna wire them all. <laughs> Feel there's anything else you'd like to say to this board? Yes, sir. I think Sergeant Matlovich is a true leader, and I think his talents are wasted as an NCO. I don't know of any other man in the Air Force who is more fair or more concerned with people. He has done and can do a great job for the Air Force, and we need him. I would like to interject that the board would like a closed session with all the principals involved for the purpose of some observations we have and some instructions we need Without the benefit of the gallery, a closed session. What's going on? With the help of Colonel Applegate, we may just be able to divide and conquer. Very well. Bailiff, clear the room. All spectators, clear the hearing room, Looks please. Like the Colonel's got a burr under his saddle. <laughs> Grand, you asked for this closed session? I did, because I am very disturbed at the way this hearing is going, especially in the questioning of our witnesses. <laughs> amateur. That's the word. Amateur. Colonel Grand. The government has laid out hard cash to bring these witnesses here. We are not getting our money's worth. Do we have the right of recall? You do. Well, then, some of these witnesses will have to be recalled. When you characterize the questioning of some of these witnesses as amateur, Colonel? <laughs> I am here looking for answers, and I'm not getting them. I agree. Now, the recorder finishes, the defense finishes, and bang, the witness is out the door and <laughs> gone before we have a chance to ask him a thing. Well, this has probably been my fault. Well, we shouldn't have to recall. It's just all been too quick. Colonel Benton, I request a hearing out of the presence of the voting members of the board. Well, sir, Colonel Applegate has been handicapped because some of his witnesses sound defense-oriented. No, oh, no matter how the witness is oriented, the questions are not probing. Sir, we're not here to incriminate the witnesses. I want a closed hearing. Very well. The voting members of the board will recess until summoned by the bailiff. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The government requests a challenge for cause of Colonel Grand and Major Holloway. Both of these officers have rejected the role they were assigned in this hearing, and in my opinion, they cannot remain impartial in determining the issues. Uh, Your Honor, I, I have no objection. Colonel Grand, you are challenged. Major Holloway, you are challenged. The challenges are sustained. You will leave this hearing. Lieutenant Colonel Pryor, you are the senior member, and now the president. 
Uh, now, I, I feel that it's in order for me to say again... Do you think you'll have any trouble of being fair and impartial in this hearing? I don't believe so. Thank you. Lieutenant Colonel John Teasdale. Junior. Are you acquainted with the respondent? I am. Will you tell the board the circumstances of your first meeting with Sergeant Matlovich? Yes. I was recruiting personnel into the social actions business when it first began in 1971. Sergeant Matlovich applied for a position. What happened then? He served on my staff as a drug counselor. Drug counselor? Well, hadn't he specialized in race relations? More recently. I was transferred up here to Langley in June of 1972. Sergeant Matlovich asked to be trained in race relations. I see. Colonel, this is the government's exhibit number three. Have you ever seen the original or a copy of this letter before? Oh, yes, I have. When and where for the first time? March 7th, 1975. It was handed to me by Sergeant Matlovich's immediate superior, Captain Collins. I have arrived at the conclusion that my sexual preference is homosexual and that this preference will in no way interfere with my performance of my Air Force duties. What is this? He says he sent a copy to the secretary of the Air Force. What does it mean? He says it's Brown versus the Board of Education. What? What's that? A, a test of sexual rights, same as Brown was a test of segregation. <sighs> Integration, segregation, homosexuality, where is he? He's in my office. Mandlovich, I've read this um, letter. Yes, sir. Why are you doing this? Well, sir, I think the letter explains itself. Oh, come on now. Whose idea was it to use you to challenge Air Force regulations? The idea was mine. The challenge is mine. You expect me to believe that you stand all alone in this, huh? Well, sir, I have the support of the American Civil Liberties Union. But I went to them. They didn't come to me. And you want me to show this letter to Colonel Fleming? Yes, sir, that would be the next step. The sergeant is scheduled to go on a staff assistance meeting this coming Sunday. Well, you won't be carrying out that assignment, Sergeant. Sergeant. Captain. Sit down. All right, Sergeant, as you know, I'm with criminal intelligence. <laughs> well, Sergeant, when are you going to stop kidding around? Kidding around, sir? Yes, yeah, Sergeant. Well, sir, I, uh... I didn't think I was kidding around. And uh, I don't believe that that's the reason why you asked me to come here, sir. We believe this is a put-on. We believe that you are putting us on. Put-on, sir? Yes. Look, I don't know what, what you're getting out of this. I don't know who put you up to it. But it, uh, we, it's a put-on. This is a hoax. This is some kind of crazy joke. Sir, if you'll notice... I'm not laughing. <laughs> Sergeant, do you really expect us to believe that a man with a purple heart, a bronze star, Air Force Commendation Medal, three tours in the NAM, a 12-year record of evaluations that sound like your mother wrote it, could Sir. be a homosexual? Sir, let me finish. All right, we're willing to make a deal. We'll tear up this letter, forgive and forget, and we'll get some serious work done around here. 
if you give up this crazy thing. Sir, the answer is no. Uh, after March 7th, what duties did you assign Sergeant Matlovich? I kept him in the office for the most part, taking messages, going for supplies, that sort of thing. Do you feel that Sergeant Matlovich is still qualified for the duties for which you brought him to headquarters? I do not. He is in violation of Air Force standards. He presents a bad image. I would not permit him to teach students, and I would not allow him to counsel our instructors. If he is retained, would you insist on his reassignment? Reassignment? To what area? Now, there is no place for him in the Air Force. To keep him in the service would be completely inconsistent with good order and discipline. Colonel Benton, the government has nothing further to add at this time. And these proceedings are closed for the day. Have dinner with us, Matt? Oh, thank you. No, it's been a long day. I'm tired. Yeah. It's been a long day for everybody. Hello. Lenny? Mom. Hey, Mom. Good to hear your voice. She said, uh, why don't you call Lenny and uh, see how things went for him? Well, it's early to say. But I, uh, I think they're trying to give me a fair hearing anyway. I got a lot of great support. How's your health? Great. I know when you're under a strain like this, Lenny, you don't always eat right. Don't worry, Mom. I'm being sensible, very sensible. <clears throat> Mom? 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 Yes? I, th I, th I thought we'd been cut off. Listen. Has Dad said anything? No. What do you expect him to say? Well, nothing, I guess, knowing him. Knowing him? Lenny, let me tell you something. You don't know him. Do you know what he did when he read about you in the paper? He locked himself in the bedroom and he cried. He cried, Lenny, for two hours. In all the time I've known that man, that's the first time I've ever known him to cry. I'm sorry, Mom. I guess you're right. I don't know him. Listen, will you tell him that I ask about him? Yes, I will. I'll tell him. So listen, I've got to go now. Okay, bye, Mom. Thanks for calling. Lenny. You take care of yourself. Will do. Is the uh, respondent prepared to proceed? Yes, we are, sir. Would you state your name and address, please? John William Money, uh, M-O-N-E-Y. My address is Johns Hopkins University, Baltimore, Maryland. Does your work at John Hopkins deal with homosexuals? This is one area of specialization. Now, uh, doctor, have you uh, examined Sergeant Matlovich on a professional basis? Uh, yes, I have. What is your impression of him? 
I've found that Sergeant Matlovich has an extraordinarily stable degree of mental health. Uh, no pathology at all. A doctor, within the psychiatric profession, what is the present-day attitude towards homosexuality as an illness? The society has removed homosexuality from its list of diseases and placed it on the list of alternate lifestyles. Uh, that would put it in the same category as uh, left-handedness. Sir, it's often said that homosexuals do not stand up well against pressure. Could you speculate as to how Sergeant Matlovich would stand up under pressure? No, I don't have to speculate. He has a history of having stood up under pressure. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Take care of yourself, sir. I will, Father. When he brings the bird down. Why are they send us in to clear that piece of real estate anyway? Especially when they'll just get run over again. Because you know somebody's going to get hurt with all that ordinance left behind. You know how the locals love to make lamps out of shells that explode. Very funny. Hey, Matlovich, what are you reading? Quotations for conservatives. Three tours and nons. <laughs> brains are scrambled. Authors don't have any brains in the first place. If we had any brains, we wouldn't be here. base they overrun it we build it back up again they blow it up it's hard to persuade myself that this is meaningful employment take it up with the chest well, let's move man i got a big limit hey you got to wear it Wires. I don't want anybody booby trapped today. All right, press this, press this. Put some pressure on this. Put some pressure on that! Medic! Get the medic! Don't stand there! Go! 
Sonny. No, he's too thin. Well, when the uh, when will you be discharged? Well, the doctor said I should count on at least two months here. Well, when you're able to come out to the house for meals, I'll fatten you up. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny, um, Lenny, in your last letter you said uh, there was something on your mind. Something you want to talk over with us? Yeah. Well, what is it? Uh, it's just that uh, I've had a lot of time to think, you know, here in the hospital. Being with other men who've been wounded most more seriously than me. How their lives have changed and how their hopes have been changed. And how I've changed. You're still our son. I know that. It's just that I've tried to think about who I really am. It's not that I'm depressed. It's just that I've tried to think about what you'd want from me. And what I and, and what I want for myself. best for you, Sonny. Absolutely. I'm not sure what that is. Well, what do you mean? What are you trying to say to us, Lenny? <laughs> I decided to re-enlist. As soon as I finish here, I report to Halbert Field for Air Commandos. Now, when Sergeant Matlovich enlisted and re-enlisted in the Air Force, he filled out a form, and in it was a question which asked, do you have homosexual tendencies? He answered, no. Uh, in your opinion, doctor, was he answering honestly, lying, or something in between? I think that at the time he filled out those forms, he was speaking quite honestly. He didn't know himself as a homosexual, or heterosexual, or a bisexual. He was a celibate, an isolated person. Uh, interestingly, it was out of his desire to help others that he found the strength, uh, finally, uh, to help himself. A big part of your training is unlearning. I remember when I was a kid, I used to put a penny in my mouth. And I can still hear my friend's mother yelling at me. Don't put a penny in your mouth. Some dirty nigger might have had it in his hand. What does this have to do with uh, race relations? Well, the syllabus says that the trainees shall observe alternate lives.